Today we've got a lot of really important things to talk about. I feel like each topic that I have today really could be its own headline, and indeed it is. So we're going to talk about the Icon of the Seas and the Sun Princess. Lots to talk about there. We've got itinerary changes that I believe are significant. Why it is really important for a cruise line to have an app that actually functions well, what that really means for your cruise experience, and the cruise line as well. And finally, our sweet perks on Princess going away. A lot to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Saturday, it is February 3rd of 2024, and I wanna start right at the top talking about Cruise Lines apps. Now, I believe that pretty much all of the Cruise Lines have an app to one degree or another. Even the luxury lines, um, from what I can tell, have an app. We, here, we often talk about Princess, um, Royal Caribbean comes up a lot, we talk about Norwegian, Celebrity, and Carnival. Those are the main Cruise Lines that we talk about here. Looking forward, I want to talk about the other some more, but here's what really stands out, what Royal Caribbean just announced, and I think that anyone who works for a cruise line should take note of this, especially people in charge of revenue, people in charge of marketing, and definitely the CEO, because that's where the buck stops. So first of all, Royal Caribbean has just announced that more and more guests are booking onboard services before they go on their cruise than ever before, um, and they're using their app to do it. So you might be familiar with the fact that the cruise lines will have an app, and and then they will also have um, something similar on their website that we, you know, had been using. We've used that long before there were any apps. So um, to quote Jason Liberty, he says, the outsized increase in our onboard revenue over the past couple of years has been fueled by new capabilities introduced to make it easier for guests to pre-book onboard experiences. And they are expecting that to expand more and more. They say that at least 70% of the guests who sail book at least one activity, and about a third of onboard purchases are now coming through the mobile app. And then the really interesting thing to me, it says that customers who buy whether it's a service, whether they book some dining that costs something, they book something in the app before they go, they usually spend two and a half times as much on their cruise on board as people who don't. So having said that, um, tell me how do you um, book your pre -board, how do you pre-book your onboard expenses for your cruise? Do you usually do it using the website? Do you usually doing do it using the app? Uh, do you not book any before you go? I can even see that varying a little bit. Um, by different crews, right? Maybe what the weather is going to be, maybe the destination, maybe who you're going to be cruising with. All of these things I think can affect how much you spend on board and how much you pre-book. But I would really like to hear from all of you how you do that. So I was thinking about how Gordon and I um, sometimes pre-book things. Well, for the Discovery Princess, we have pre-booked our 360 experience for our Sun Princess cruise. Before that was canceled, we had uh, pre-booked specialty dining, places that we wanted to try. Um, sometimes I book something in the spa, either for Gordon and I. I like to get uh, my hair done, so sometimes I do pre-book that. If I know what day I already want to do that, uh, we, we pre-book excursions. We usually pre-book our excursions on the website, though. We don't generally do that in the app. and. Uh, so let me know in the comments below, but I thought that that was really interesting, and I thought you should know about it because it's interesting, but also to be aware of how it is that you're spending your money and how aware the cruise lines are of you doing that. So I think it's very significant if you are in charge of an app for a cruise line, you should have it working like a dream and offering everything possible for someone to pre-book. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join us here as often as you can. We would love to hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments. And if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend? Thank you very much. Or on a Facebook group, anybody that you think would be benefit from this information. Now, uh, let's talk about the Icon of the Seas and the Sun Princess for a minute. 
it's really interesting. Um, I believe it was just yesterday, um, one of my colleagues, I'll call him a colleague, that kind of, um, he's um, in a different league than I am, but Don um, Terrace of Don's Family Vacation, he put out a video saying that he's got some questions about how really ready the icon of the seas is to sail, um, to have everything ready on board for the experience that passengers are expecting when they board, and the same with the Sun Princess. So here are some things that I I thought we could talk about and think about and I want to hear what you think about it. So first of all, um, it's important today to note that Royal Caribbean um, has realized that they have some balconies that they were marketing as being unobstructed and they are indeed obstructed and can be so up to 20% and listen to how the obstruction might occur. Um, so here's what they are releasing to guests who are booked in these cabins. It says, we're counting on down the days, you know, till we welcome you on board to the icon of the seas. They point out that sometimes when you're building a ship, especially a new one in its class, that the end product can vary a little bit from the, um, you know, the deck plans that we would have been seeing. After noticing that, their final review, they have noted, and this is to the people, that your room has a slightly obstructive view of up to 20%. To me, 20% is not um, slight. 20% <laughs> is a fifth of your view there. And so anyway, due to structure, which supports our window watchers, for a majority of your time on board, your view will have minimal obstruction. Then for a brief period, the window washer may be stationed outside your balcony. Now to me, that is a huge difference between going from unobstructed to you're gonna have a window washer standing outside of your balcony some of the time. And uh, Royal Caribbean is not offering any money back to the people who have booked this ca these cabins. And so um, the cabins that so far have been identified as being this, and we're just going to have to wait and see. I honestly think that it's a, th it's a thing of like, they just didn't pay attention and they got caught. And so... Um, cabins 9162 and then the 10162, 11162, and 12162, and some of the cabins right around it in that area. It sounds like those are the cabins that this um, applies to. So if you are booked on the Icon of the Seas, I would definitely take a look at the deck plan for what that's worth and um, see if you are anywhere near any of those cabins. And to me, it's going to be really interesting moving forward um, to find out if we've got any more obstructed balconies than they were aware of. And I'm honestly wondering if they found out about this as um, people were on for the press crews and everything to do with that, if people reported it and said, hey, this is obstructed. And uh, so, yeah, let me know what you think about that. That's crazy. So I wonder if that's going to happen any on the Sun Princess. Um, and one thing that um, does stand out to me on the Sun Princess is I am really excited to see, like all of us are, waiting for that um, to know for sure if that sailing is going to go on February 18th. Um, Don was talking about already on the icon, they did not have all of the entertainment ready to go. So I will be really anxious to hear from anyone who gets to be on that February 18th sailing if it goes, um, how everything is. Is everything in order? Is it going smoothly? Is all of the entertainment up and running without a hitch? Um, that's going to be really interesting to see. And if any of you have any contact with anybody on um, the Sun Princess, let us know what they're saying. I know one of our Let's Go family members posted that someone that they knew um, that works in the main dining room, a crew member, is on the Sun Princess. And they just said the reason it didn't go on February 8th is because it's not ready. So I don't know, you know, it's hard to know what all that entails, but I'm really hoping that goes. So I've given a lot of thought to what I would do if I were in charge. I know that when these cruise lines build these big new ships, they want them to start sailing with paying passengers at the earliest possible moment. They need to pay for that ship. They want to start making money on that ship. And so, of course, not a moment to lose. But, you know, from this experience of having the icon not ready, I remember when um, Don and Tony went on the Wonder of the Seas. Remember watching those videos and that ship was not ready. It was not ready. Um, it didn't, you know, it was structurally, um, like, it didn't sink or anything, but they were not really ready to present the experience that the the cruise passengers on those early sailings expected and clearly it's that way with the icon thus far so it'll just be so interesting to see how everything shakes out with the sun princess now um, i told you yesterday about oceania's um, allure
Aurora is being delayed. And I just want to say hats off. Hats off to that management team for realizing that they needed to do that so that when they start cruising with their passengers on board, they are ready to offer the experience that all of that their clientele is expecting. So it'll just be fun. So let me know what you think in the comments, would you? It's also interesting, isn't it? Um, oh, so what would I do? I just remembered I was going to tell you that. Um, if I were in charge, I would say, okay, tell me the date that that ship can be ready. And then I would add like a good six weeks to it, just so that we could have everything going smoothly. And I know, I know time is many, I know. But I also think that having happy customers is really, really important not having to cancel a cruise at the last minute with doing that. Um, like Princess had to give everyone's money back. They gave the extra uh, future cruise credit to everybody. It's an expense and all of the time that the manpower that it took for everyone to cancel those cruises and manage all of that. So it's no small expense either. A quick note about when you are booked on a cruise and you've got your insurance policy and then that cruise is canceled because the ship is not ready. One of our Let's Go family members that were due to be on that sailing with us on February 8th, so I hope I get to see him again on another sailing. They had a travel insurance policy with IMG Travel Insurance Company. So they ended up calling that insurance company because yes, if you were booked on that sailing on February 8th, you did get your money back from Princess. But there are a lot of other expenses to do with travel that um, you wouldn't be getting your money back. So as they contacted that insurance company, they told them that having a cruise canceled because a ship was not ready to sell yet was not an acceptable reason for a claim. And they were really nice and let them move that insurance policy to another sailing that they've got. So their money was not lost. But just wanted to point out to you that there are a lot of ins and outs on insurance when we look at situations like this. I've got a couple. Um, I want to tell you about a quick update on the Sky Princess. And then we are going to talk about our itinerary changes and what's going on with those sweet benefits on Princess. So we've got a Let's Go family member who right now is on the Sky Princess sailing in the beautiful Caribbean and she is reporting that everything is going really wonderful. The buffet has been very good with lots of variety that she had not seen before on their more recent cruises, which had been on the Caribbean Princess and the Ruby Princesses in the not-too-distant past. So it sounds like things are getting better. She said they absolutely are loving the International Cafe with um, selections that they have not seen there as well. And those new pizza muffins that we have been hearing about are absolutely delicious. The Wi-Fi is working really well. The service on the ship is excellent. The new app, she said, is working well. And I was happy to hear a lot of people have been asking if they have the thing of find your um, shipmate, you know, whoever it is that you're sailing with. And um, she said that it is there. You just have to look under the profile and it's called My Shipmates. And so I'm happy that that that's available because then you can find who it is you're sailing with if you don't know where they are. And finally, um, she said that ship is sailing at a really, like, almost full. It seems like it's pretty full. So that, that bodes well. Now, um, let's talk about a couple of itinerary changes here. Last night in our live we, live, we talked a little bit about there have been several itinerary changes that have moved the calls in Mahogany Bay over to the port called Coxon Hole. We looked it up, it's about a 15 minute drive. Here's some really interesting things about it though. Um, our Let's Go family member had sent me this um, and it was for their call there on January 29th, so just a couple of days ago. But interestingly, due to the itinerary change, shore excursions previously booked in Roatan have been canceled and will be refunded to your original form of payment. And then if you want to do any excursions there in Coxon Hole, you're going to have to rebook and pick your excursions out. So... A couple of notes about that. First of all, they said that it might take two to four weeks for that refund of your canceled excursions to show up on your credit card. So know that sometimes they're super slow about that. Interestingly enough, though, um, with them just those ports being so close together, maybe those of you that I have, I've been to Mahogany Bay, but I've never been to Coxon Hole there. So maybe um, if any of you would maybe know why they would be canceled, um, they're close enough that you would think that maybe you could just run them. So that's just a heads up. Know that if you book a princess cruise, you might end up over in Coxon Hole. Uh, I don't really know what you can do about that, but um, that's what we are hearing that has been happening quite often lately. Now, um, we also talked about for a minute the Norwegian Pearl. 
Now, the Norwegian Pearl was due to sail out of Venice, and I find this whole situation so interesting, and so I want to know what you all know about it, so put it in the comments. So, the Norwegian Pearl was set to sail out of Venice. For a couple of years now, cruise ships have not been able to call in the lagoon there in Venice. Um, the large cruise ships have had to either go out of Ravenna, which is kind of down <laughs> from Venice, or Trieste, which is kind of up and around. Trieste is close to where the Sun Princess is, as she is getting um, everything done there at the Fincantieri shipyard, just to kind of give you an idea on the map. So basically, Trieste is like up and over from Venice, and Ravenna is down. Um, if I had my choice, I know that it's Royal Caribbean usually goes out of Ravenna, and um, this sailing on the Norwegian Pearl, the itinerary here says they are going to go out of Trieste. Ravenna is known for their mosaics. So if you go there, like allow some time to go some to some churches and see everything they've got there because it is world renowned for their mosaics. Just putting that there. But they just barely were notified that um, their sep cruise that is coming this September will be going out of Trieste now rather than out of Venice. And of course, people are upset about that because they trusted that when they saw that Norwegian was saying out of Venice, they would get to go, even though... Uh, um, Venice has not been allowing that for ships of really any size at all. The Pearl is one of the smaller ships, but still, I find it really interesting why it has taken them so long to say that you're going to have to go out of Trieste now. And I know it is a travel, it is a distance, and it does lessen your time in Venice. So if I were going on a cruise, um, I would, like with Norwegian, ask for a deviation. Um, sometimes you have to pay like $25, depends on the length of the deviation you want. So even if you book your air with Norwegian uh, or Viking, whoever, you ask for a deviation and say, I want to come in a day early. I want to come in four days early, whatever it is, so that you can fly in and have some time to see Venice. And then you can um, to either take the transfer that they offer up to Trieste or get yourself there and um, begin your cruise from there. So just putting that out there, but I find it really interesting. It took this long. So put in the comments why you think it took so long. Um, a few other um, times and ports have been um, kind of tweaked with that announcement there. I will say it is a very nice cruise that that Norwegian Pearl is doing. So if you um, were wanting to go on a really nice cruise there from the Venice area, uh, from Trieste, so they give an overnight there. So that's really nice in the, um, so you can board on, um, board the first day, you get to have an overnight, and then the next night you leave at 11 p.m. They're going to go to Kopor, Slovenia, Split, Croatia, uh, Kotor, Montenegro, Dubrovnik, Croatia, Corfu, Greece. I love Corfu, love Corfu. Santorini, Greece, Mykonos, and Piraeus, um, Athens, the port there in Athens. So it is an excellent cruise. What, yeah, a fa it's a fabulous cruise, actually actually for that region. So I'm really excited that you get to go to my Let's Go family member that was kind enough to send that to me. Alrighty, let's talk about what is going on with the sweet benefits on Princess. We've got a Let's Go family member that was just on the Discovery Princess in October. Okay, just a couple of months ago. They were in the penthouse suite. They received the 360 dining experience, complimentary, and the laundry was complimentary. They were able, one of the perks of booking in the suite there, they were able to book their complimentary embarkation day dinner at a specialty restaurant. They were able to do that on the app, set the time, they didn't have to pay for anything. It was working really smoothly. Now they have that same penthouse suite booked on the Enchanted Princess and they are supposed to be going in March. And um, they con she contacted Princess um, regarding booking that um, the Dining 360 and was told that is no longer a sweet perk. No longer a sweet perk and free laundry is no longer a sweet perk. And so let us know those of you that sail in a suite, is this what you are seeing? I looked at the website, Princess's website, and of course it still says that those are included perks. Um, now when you call Princess, it really depends on who you get on the phone, what they're going to tell you. And so I thought about calling, but I thought, well, that's not a definitive answer on anything. And so let us know, those of you who have been sailing lately, and especially on the Enchanted, because this is the ship she's going to go on, what the sweet perks have been looking like, and if you have heard that any of the others are going to be going away. It's a really big deal to book a suite and to get the perks that go with it. 
uh, historically they take really good care of you when you stay in a suite and those are indeed uh, perks that are offered with it so I really look forward to hearing from all of you and I would also like to say you would think that it would be the same across ships right you wouldn't think that one ship would offer this as a perk and the other one not offer that as a perk so lots to think about here and a quick question that I have for you also as well is this whole situation with icon of the seas the delay of the sun princess is this impacting whether or not you want to book and just an inaugural cruise on a ship or do you want to wait a couple of months do you want to pick that second or third sailing wait a few months tell me in the comments uh, what this um, kind of how this is affecting your decision making on booking an inaugural so thanks for watching my videos it is such a pleasure to be here with you and I'll be talking to you all again really soon you all take really good care God bless you love you bye bye